trying to do the live thing. We've uh, had trouble with that in the past. Uh, so uh, trying it a different way. So uh, if, uh, if it does uh, it get on by a video, uh, you won't be seen. Uh, if it does, it might be just by uh, audio, so you might be heard. Uh, so uh, if you want to say something that you're not, you don't want the whole world to say, you can disguise your voice, okay? Um, and uh, try to hide a little bit. <laughs> um, with that, it uh, looks like everyone's got what we need, and we'll begin with a prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for sending uh, your Son, Jesus Christ, uh, to live and die in our place. Thank you for the work of the Holy Spirit uh, to bring us by the means of grace uh, to faith in your Son. That we might also be able to call you uh, our loving Father. As we uh, study uh, this, uh, th this next class, uh, help us uh, to rejoice uh, in the love that you have shown for us and in the new heart that your Holy Spirit creates in us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, uh, everyone's got a booklet here. You can follow along there. Uh, we're going to do some drawing on the board up here as well as we get going. Uh, page one is where, where we'll start. Uh, this page one's a good starting point. Um, I'll do a little reading. We'll do some discussing. Um, I think this will be fun. Algorithms and liturgical rhythm. Algorithms. I had not heard the word or if I had, I paid no attention. But one summer Saturday morning, I found out about the magic algorithms could do. I stayed the weekend with some friends in Milwaukee, and in the morning, a buddy turned on some music on his computer, but he did not play it from a burned CD or a carefully crafted playlist of his own downloads. It was from this new, or new to me at least, this new thing called Pandora. So what year was this? Uh, this was 05, somewhere around there. Um, after a few great songs, I asked him about it. He explained, you basically control your own radio station. It plays what you like. If it plays what you don't like, you let it know with a simple click, and it will adjust to what you like. When I found out about this magical musical algorithm, I signed up and started crafting my own radio stations. I loved it. The music I wanted to hear, I heard. The music I didn't want to hear was sent packing. New music was also introduced to me, and that may have been the best part. I remember first hearing the Black Keys through this, and a pretty girl and I would later bond over that band. Obsessed with it at first, and obsessed with Led Zeppelin at the time, I noticed that the more you told it what you liked, the narrower the station became. It could become an echo chamber. When you chase it down what you like, you put blinders on. You know what you like, and you like what you like, and you want to hear what you like, and pretty soon the only song left is Cashmere, and played on repeat. It's a Led Zeppelin song. It is a good song. Oh. It could be an echo chamber, but it did not have to be. The algorithm could open doors to more and new and different, but not if you are even on the verge of being obsessed with you, what you like. It will give you what you like until it is the only thing you will tolerate. Better than a magical musical algorithm is a pretty girl who loves, lives, and breathes music. I got to marry her. Now, the old heart is curved <laughs> in. It is an echo chamber, a self-obsessed golem. Algorithms are not bad. They give you what you like. They adjust to what you pay attention to. They put your heart on display. They give you what you like and can show you who you are. They expose man's heart, and man's heart is curved in on itself. A king should not surround himself with yes-men. The psalmist sings this wisdom, Let a righteous man strike me, it is a mercy. Let him rebuke me, it is lotion on my head. My head will not refuse it. A king, without someone who can strike and rebuke, will be his own downfall. We can easily surround ourselves with yes-men, 
The algorithm will introduce us to them. Have an opinion that is patently false? I will introduce you to a blogger who agrees with you. Want to ogle at pictures of people? I'll show you an ever-expanding universe of porn. Want proof that Elvis is still alive? Here are 100 bloggers. Man's heart, left unrebuked, will crumble further in on itself. And we see it happening. On the internet, you can see the heart of mankind on display, pursuing its longing, listening only to those who scratch its ears. It should be no surprise that we are where we are. Where we are is awful. Follow your heart has been preached to us for generations. And the algorithms allow us to follow the heart down rabbit hole after rabbit hole. Alice's Wonderland, formed by quite the imagination, might be a nicer reality than our current reality formed by man's heart. Algorithms are not the problem. My heart is the problem. I like what I like. You like what you like. Just live and let live, and together we will bring Western civilization further down the toilet. The heart must be made new. The liturgy of the church is an antidote for our curved-in society. It saves me from me. Algorithms scratch the itching ears of the old heart. Liturgy creates a new heart. Algorithms feed fantasy. Liturgy feeds with reality, capital R. Algorithms put the old heart on display. Liturgy puts the heart of the Son of Man on display. And it is this heart, his holy heart, that the liturgy also forms in us. The liturgy helps the new heart created in baptism to beat in rhythm with the heart of Christ. <laughs> In the following, we will explore the heart, both the old and the new. We will see how our liturgy forms our hearts and answers our prayer. Create in me a new heart, O God. So for discussion, algorithms change your feed to suit your likes. Liturgy feeds you with Jesus changes your likes. So that word feed, everyone know what I mean by that? Yeah. Um, so you have your social media feed um, uh, that you're scrolling through um, and it's giving you uh, other people's pictures, articles, things like that. It's suggesting to you things based off of the things that you like. So algorithms change your feed, change what you see on your phone constantly. In order to suit your likes, liturgy feeds you with Jesus and changes your likes. Discuss. <laughs> the liturgy brings you back to back home, so to speak. I, I, I got to thinking about this this past week. I, I mean, everything, it brings me back to my mom's home. Um, you know, she doesn't think about going over the speed limit. Everything that was taught to her, I mean, drilled into her being <laughs> from her parents back on the farm. I, I mean, she doesn't dream about doing those things because of her upbringing. You know, you know both of my parents were brought up on farm, so, you know, and there's a lot of me that is that way because of, it, and I was wondering yeah. why, because of farm upbringing is, is how I stated it. Because it's I a living know. rhythm yeah. that uh, it imprints itself on you yeah. and can be a very good thing. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, and that's how I told her to. And I don't know how else to explain it. I mean, the city living is different. Yeah, there's a different there's a different different rhythm to that. Yeah, uh, Chicago. Kids yeah, kids don't think anything of stealing something. Well, it depends on which. Uh, you just have you got more kids uh, in the city, and so a, um, a more chance of those some of them being uh, uh, thieves. Yeah, but, but yeah, you know, it's different. And see something like that, 
to me is uh, no, I, I wouldn't do it. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's just different morals. Mm -hmm. More what, what we call them in the other class. Uh, um, what do we call it? Yeah, what were we talking about? Tuesday night, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh. I just remember watching the boys running around like crazy in the background. And, um, uh, yeah. Self-worth or something. Oh, yeah, you're... Uh, um, your worth and your dignity, your life. Yeah, um, yeah stuff like that. Yeah. 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 Okay, uh, other thoughts, Joyce? Oh, on Wednesday night, the pastor um, talked about extreme makeover. If you go to home edition, yeah. Oh, it was so good how he's relating to changing your heart, mm -hmm. you know, focusing on that. Okay. And the algorithm, you know, the just the computer system, it's the way it's got it's, it's set up so that if you like it, it'll give you what you like, which is good advertising, right? And you continue to give it changes to suit you. Um, when we come to church, we want it the other way around the word of God changing us forming us so that we're growing rather than being stagnant and uh, narrow-minded. And this this is the stuff I like, and then I'm just being fed what I like over and over again until I become like uh, something totally different than who I was meant to be, uh, but a corrupt sort of uh, little golem uh, kind of thing. Sadly, there are some churches that give people that, what they want to hear. Uh, yeah. And, and just keep feeding that rather than what, what they should hear. <laughs> and that's part of what we're going to uh, be going through in this uh, class for a number of months now. Um, what danger is there when the church is being like the algorithm uh, and uh, the, their liturgy, the, their ordered service, or whatever they want to call it, is more, what do you like? And we'll keep adjusting to you, and you remain, uh, you know, unchanged, unpruned, to go to John 15, and Jesus talking about the Heavenly Father as the gardener, who prunes the ones that he loves, that they might be ever more fruitful, so that we grow, grow, grow. Um, when uh, the church is like the algorithm, what do you like? What do you like? What do you like? You don't grow in a healthy way. Liturgy pulls us out of us. Um, let's do a little uh, diagramming. Um, so we'll have a couple of circles here. Um, green circle, what I like. Uh, blue circle, don't think anything about the colors themselves, just the ones that I picked up. Blue circle, what is good? Um, and I'll put that all capitals uh, to, uh, we've talked about transcendentals in the past, things that are, this is what is good no matter when, no matter where, no matter what, you know, whether if it was good 500 years ago, in this sense, it's good now. Um, if it's good here, it's good in China, that, that transcendental good. So what I like and what is good can overlap, right? Um, and there can be what I like that's not good, and there can be what is good that I don't like, all right? Now I'm going to put uh, a couple of words up here, each of them two times. Work, rest. Work, rest, and we'll put a quotation marks around there. Um, so there can be work and rest that's not good, but I like it. Work, rest. <coughs> there can be work and rest that's good that I also don't like. Explain yeah. that to me. fun way of teaching. Um, <laughs> I'll come to a conclusion. You uh, do all of the thinking uh, that brought me to that conclusion. 
What do I mean there? That there can be work and rest that we that is good, but that I don't like, and there can be work and rest that is not good, but that I like. And you can even just pick one of those four and discuss that. Me coming home sick. I came home sick on Wednesday from work for. My allergies were acting up too much and I had to come home from work is that God's reminding me just to rest sometimes because I didn't like it. Mm. <laughs> but, you know, I was with my individual and I started having headache and sneezing too much and I finally said I have to go home. Um, I've got a million things to do. i got no time for rest right yeah, now. Yeah. 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 So I can... You need to rest, so go home and take a nap. And there's a rhythm to creation. There's evening, there's morning. Uh, God creates in six days and he rests on the seventh. Rest is there as God's gift, uh, but sometimes I'm too busy. And what's implied in there is I'm too important to be resting. The world needs me. I got stuff to do. I'm saving the world. Um, I'm too important to stop. Um, I don't like that kind of rest. Um, but we need it. You're, you're not the world's savior. You can take a nap. It's okay. You're not that important. Other thoughts on that? What about some of these over here? Well, would the rest on the what I like maybe be I'm lazy? Okay. So we would talk about laziness or instead. Sloth, or Sloth, which comes from the word Acadia in Greek. Uh, which is to do, to, to purposely avoid the good that you're supposed to do. And that's not restful, right? So if, uh, if I need to make a tough phone call, but then I just start scrolling through Facebook, um, I'm just going to take a break. I'll, 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 it's just going to be a little break. I'm just going to scroll a little bit, and then I'll, <laughs> then I'll get back to work. And then, like, the five minutes turns into 15, and turns into 20, or whatever. When I was a, a single man living in an apartment, um, I'm gonna get all of the laundry done, get it all caught up. I'll just take a little break and watch a little bit of college yeah. game day. Uh, <laughs> 10 hours later, um, I'm in the, to the, my third game that I've uh, been watching and well, we'll do the laundry next Saturday. <laughs> yeah, I rested. That's not good, that's not rest. So rest in this rhythm that God has set up, um, they work they lead into each other. Rest, uh, it's not just rest from what is from what is good and like a flight away from what is good. It's a rest from work for work. And I work, and when I'm working well, it fuels my rest uh, so I can, it can be, you know, after a good, long, hard day of work, uh, when I used to uh, uh, lay brick pavers through, um, patios um, and uh, I was not the skilled guy I was the donkey uh, so uh, yeah mule uh, carry the brick from the front yard to the backyard that's a do that all day boy rest was great rest and work uh, rest and work uh, flow into each other uh, and then after that rest I mean I'm ready to go if it's good rest um, the rest of our forgiveness our Sabbath rest in Christ um, uh, this doesn't lead us to be lazy. Uh, tolerance in place of grace, that's a rest for the conscience um, that allows you to remain uh, evil. Whereas rest that is forgiveness in the gospel, um, I get to get out and go in love because it's real rest that grows into and flows into the work of doing love. I'm actually loved so that I can love. Tolerance is this, uh, this kind of rest, that boy, do I like it because I'm accepted just the way that I am. Um, but then I'm never gonna grow. This rest in the gospel includes the pruning of the Father in John 15, and that hurts. There's some sting to that, but it brings growth and life. All sorts of things. So you see how that, that kind of works. Uh, there can be what I like that's not good, and there can be what is good uh, that I like. What 
uh, ultimately, as we grow, we, we would want uh, these to go together. But I think in order for these to go together so that more of what I like is what is good, we got to forget about this. Who cares if I like it? That's not the question. That's not the deciding question. Um, if I, what am I going to do today? If the main goal is to do what I like, um, there's a whole lot of this junk that is going to kill me anyway and hurt the people around me that I'm going to go for. <clears throat> my sinful nature hates everything that is good. And so if my question, my driving question every day is, what do I like? I'm going to do what I like. Um, that's a problem. If the driving question instead is, what is good? And if it's good and I don't like it, that's the sort of thing that I really need to, like, I got to do that because then I'm fighting the battle where the battle ought to be fought within my heart against my sinful nature. So if there's a chore that I particularly despise at home, um, it's got to be a good thing, right? Otherwise, I mean, the chores that we have at home are in and of themselves good. Whether you like them or not, doesn't matter. They are good. If they're good and I don't like them, I need to fight against my sinful nature uh, and do that, do that thing that I hate. Because if I'm focused on what I like and I hate this chore, the chore's gonna have to be done, right? Probably none of us are gonna get to a point where we have 50 servants doing all of our chores for us. We gotta do the stuff. <laughs> And if I'm fixated on, I don't like this, then everyone else in my house is like an enemy. Because why didn't he do it? Why didn't she get that done? I'm working all day. I gotta come home and do this? But if I can recognize it as a good thing and my sinful nature for what it is, then I fight against me and the battle is fought where it ought to be fought not between me and my spouse, because I work all day. Why do I have to do this? Oh, this is good. I get to do this. Ah, that's the new heart. This is good, and I get to do it. And the more I can be looking for, this is Ecclesiastes that we'll get to um, a number of weeks from now, the more that I can focus on what is good in my work, the more I'm killing my sinful nature that uh, likes some stuff that it shouldn't like. And then it gets quieter and quieter as I kill it, kill it, kill it. And what also is becomes quieter and quieter is the bickering within the household. Because there's, if chores are good, there should be no reason to fight about them. Because everyone should love them. It's the way it ought to be. We're sinners, and we hate good stuff. We fight against it, but there's the battle. It's not between family members, it's me and my heart. So I remember my baptism, do what is good, and especially try to do what is the, the good that I really hate. So what's your least favorite chore? Think about that, go home. Let that be your sad Sunday afternoon. <laughs> the Sunday afternoon of fighting against self uh, do the last thing that you want to do, because if you can do that, who are you going to fight with within your house, right? It's tough. Um, so, uh, what are, well, let's, let's pause there. Um, thoughts on this before we move on to some terms that will be important for us to clarify going forward for this whole course. I don't want to sound like the old broken record, but a lot of chores and work towards inside the house just look at his vocation. Yeah, if this is your vocation, uh, what we mean by vocation as Lutherans is God is calling me to love my neighbor. Uh, so I can't help uh, my wife a whole lot with the kids on Sunday morning. The times that I have tried to, like before church, I'd make matters worse. I used to uh, look around Elias' uh, his birth that I, I would 
come to church early, uh, get things ready, shoot back and, you know, help with breakfast, get the kids ready. Uh, but what happens when I come in and they're awake? Their energy just <laughs> skyrockets. And then when I have to leave without them, they're, oh, meltdown. Oh, yeah. So, like, I, I'm no help. Um, one way I could help, one way I could love them, make sure that uh, the church clothes are where mom knows that they're going to be. <laughs> That's a chore, a miserable, tedious chore that's beneath my sinful nature. Why would I ever have to do it? I shouldn't be a servant. Uh, but what a great way that God has uh, called me in my vocation to love my wife uh, in that way. Um, and when I'm thinking about vocation like that, God has called me to love this person, then, you know, what I like kind of goes in the background because this is too amazing uh, uh, to uh, be harmed by, well, I don't like doing chores <laughs> um, and uh, the, the grumpiness. This is awesome. God has chosen me to love someone. Uh, maybe that means I get to change a diaper. Wash your hands. <laughs> um, you know? But what a good thing. This is about God and my neighbor. This is not about me and my likes. Um, and that's freedom then. Uh, this is slavery. What I like. That is slavery. That's narrow. That's. But if it's about my neighbor and God who loves my neighbor and gets to love my neighbor through me, you know, there's dignity in all of the things. There's dignity in sweeping the floor. This is honor. Uh, what a great thing to, um, like Jesus, wash feet. Tedious, lowly, servant-like life. What a great. Good, good that uh, my sinful nature hates, and therefore it's a good that I should like be active in and try to do uh, in order to actively fight against the sinful nature. Okay, terms to clarify, uh, the bottom of page two, uh, the heart and liturgy. Uh, these are both very flexible words. Uh, if you read... Um, if you read 10 different books and they all use the word heart, they might be using it 10 different ways. Uh, same with the word liturgy. So how are we using them? Uh, with the word heart, we're using them uh, in the sense of Psalm 51 and Ezekiel uh, chapter 36. So in Psalm 51, create in me a new heart. Ezekiel 36, uh, I will remove your heart of stone and replace it with a heart of flesh. Uh, so Paul likes to talk about the old man and the new man. And that's how I'm using the word heart here. Uh, the old heart, the new heart. Okay. Um, so to clarify that. Uh, and then liturgy, uh, again, a kind of a flexible term. Um, the word itself uh, comes from uh, the Roman Empire and a liturgia uh, is like a, it had to do with governmental service. Uh, so it's a service word. The question for us and how we use it is who's serving whom? Um, we had a liturgy this morning. Uh, who's serving whom? Um, some quick erasing and dropping markers. Um, In the Sunday morning service, God serves us. That's what happens in church. That's the main thing. You know, we praise him, but primarily it's an arrow going down. God gives gifts. Um, out, out in the world, having been loved, uh, when we go out into the world, uh, this is America and South America, um, we serve neighbor. Okay, so vocation stuff. I don't know how to spell neighbor, cram it in there. Um, here, God serves us. He feeds us. He forgives us. Um, and as we go out, uh, we take up our vocations. Uh, we love our neighbor. We have been loved, and now we go and love. Uh, now, there's love that happens here, uh, and there's uh, arrow that goes up here uh, in uh, response to God. 
uh, but primarily here, it's coming down. And primarily out there, uh, our act of worship is offering our bodies, in Romans 12, offering our bodies as living sacrifices for the glory of God and for the good of our neighbor. Um, so we serve our neighbor. God doesn't really need our good works, right? He's fine without them. Uh, but who does? Our neighbors. Okay? So in the church, we want to think about arrow coming down to us. It's uh, the liturgy, then we, uh, we've uh, started using the term, which comes uh, uh, out of, a, this is a fun German word, uh, Gottesdienst, uh, comes from that term. We call it the divine service in our hymnal, right? We started doing that in the little blue hymnal that came out about 15 years ago. The divine service. Uh, it is God serving us. And after we have been served and loved, uh, then the arrow goes out from God through us to our neighbor. That's the simplicity and the beauty of this liturgical rhythm uh, of the Christian life. God gives to us and brings us along to love others. Okay? So liturgy, uh, some other ways that the word can be used. You can talk about a specific liturgy. And so we, talk, we can talk about the communion liturgy or the uh, Vespers Liturgy. So in just an order of service. Uh, and uh, that's uh, so specifically an order of service. Um, we'll be talking mostly uh, here in this class on this, about the Sunday morning liturgy. So what we just did this morning, the divine service. Um, we'll talk a little bit about the uh, weekday services of matins and vespers um, in one of the lessons, but for the most part, we're just going to be walking through preparation for coming to church, the preparation part of the church service, uh, the Word of God part of the church service, and then the Holy Communion part of the church service, and seeing how it pulls off all of this stuff, and so that uh, we're just being fed in order to uh, to be loved, and since we have uh, been loved, to also love. Um, and so we'll see practical stuff in every little detail of the church service uh, that you can take with you throughout the, the week. So those are those terms, heart and liturgy. Um, the, I mentioned that we uh, are using the word heart the way that we're using it in Psalm 51. Uh, so let's look at Psalm 51 on page 3. Uh, read through that and talk about that beautiful psalm. Um, but as we're turning there, uh, any thoughts uh, at all on uh, what we've been talking about so far or, or these terms, heart and liturgy? All right. I'm going to read Psalm 51. Come back and ask some questions, pull some, uh, take a look at some words and chew on them. Uh, this translation is from the English Heritage Version. Uh, our synod put that out uh, here recently. Uh, one of the good things about the, this translation, it, it, what, one of the places it fits really well is in the Bible class setting. Um, it uh, has that uh, in mind as they were working through the, the translation. So some of the things not smooth to read sometimes, um, but that slows you down and makes you think and makes you ask questions. Uh, so it's a great translation for the Bible class setting. Be gracious to me, God, according to your mercy. Erase my acts of rebellion according to the greatness of your compassion. Scrub me clean from my guilt. Purify me from my sin. For I admit my rebellious acts, my sin is always in front of me. Against you, you only have I sinned, and I have done this evil in your eyes. So you are justified when you sentence me. You are blameless when you judge. Certainly I was guilty when I was born. I was sinful when my mother conceived me. Since you desire truth on the inside, in my hidden heart you teach me wisdom. 
Remove my sin with hyssop and I will be clean. Wash me and I will be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones you have crushed celebrate. Hide your face from my sins. Erase all my guilty deeds. Create in me a pure heart, O God. Renew an unwavering spirit within me. Do not cast me from your presence. Do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation. Sustain me with a willing spirit. I will teach rebels your ways and sinners will turn to you. Deliver me from bloodshed, O God, the God who saves me. My tongue will shout for joy about your righteousness. Lord, open my lips and my mouth will declare your praise. For you do not delight in sacrifice, or I would give it. You do not take pleasure in burnt offerings. The sacrifices of God, the sacrifices God wants are a broken spirit, a broken and, contra and crushed heart, O God, you will not despise. As it pleases you, do good for Zion. Build up the walls of Jerusalem. Then you will be pleased with righteous sacrifices, burnt offerings and whole offerings. Then bulls will be offered upon your altar. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Verse 10, create in me a pure heart, O God. This is the desire we have when we come to church. Uh, this is different than, uh, again, the algorithm, uh, where I love the algorithm because it... Uh, it scratches the itching ears of my heart. It gives me what I desire. Um, it caters to me. Um, you know, I'm a, a special little snowflake. It gives me everything I want. Um, we come with a different desire to church. Uh, create in me a pure heart, a new heart, um, and everything that flows after that. Uh, renew an unwavering spirit within me. Do not cast me from your presence. Do not take your spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation. Sustain me with a willing spirit. It is this that we're coming. We are desiring God to pour down to us. We don't come to him and say, look at all my bulls and offerings. Look at all my good works that I've done. Uh, God, I thank you that I'm not like other men. Um, you know, uh, robbers, evildoers, tax collectors, uh, Democrats, whichever, or Republicans, whichever you are the other way. Yeah. Uh, not God, I thank you, I'm not like other men. Um, what does God desire when we come to him? Uh, look at, uh, start at verse 16, kind of make your way down uh, through 17 as well. What is the broken spirit? Or the contrite heart. Okay. Yeah, I uh, broke into the uh, more familiar <laughs> translation for that. You weren't alone. <laughs> but that, uh, and this is one of those places where I, I like this translation. A broken and crushed heart. There's, a, there's that picture in the Hebrew word. A broken and crushed heart is what he, he desires. What's a broken and crushed heart? What is this? Uh, it needs a savior. I know I need a savior. I, I know I need a savior. Uh, it's beyond me fixing. If if I come to Jesus and give him my heart as an offering, um, and to quote uh, Bo Geertz, a Swedish uh, Lutheran from last century, it, so that, that's a pretty... Uh, pretty uh, terrible Christmas gift uh, to give to your Savior, your heart. You might as well give him an old tin can that's empty and rusted, you know? Um, what a gift. I give my heart to Jesus. What he does instead is he takes it. He creates in us a new one. He removes the heart of stone, gives us a heart of flesh. Uh, we come with nothing. We come broken and crushed and in need of a Savior. Uh, not... Not like I'm going, you know, turning on Pandora, and I want to hear, I want to hear my Led Zeppelin songs, because it's stuff that I like, uh, which is fine, I really love Pandora, <laughs> um, which is fine there, it doesn't work with me and God, and it really doesn't work great with our relationships either, 
if with other people I'm demanding what I like from them, I'm constantly being disappointed in them because the people around me are sinners. Uh, and if I'm not crushed to the point of uh, saying with Paul, uh, where does Paul rank himself uh, uh, among sinners? Chief of, Chief of sinners, I am the worst. Um, if I don't do that, you know, how's that going to change my relationship with God, my relationship with other people? I become very demanding and angry all of the time. And I don't grow. Because I'm never looking at me. It's not this repent, this ongoing life of repentance where I see my problems. I rejoice in my Father who prunes me to make me more fruitful. I'm not wanting, I'm not desirous of that, desperate for that. I'm desperate for those people to be changed and I get to stay the same. And I love the algorithms because they'll change for me. And I don't got to do nothing. When we come to church, we come in the spirit of Psalm 51. Um, I am desperate to be worked on, uh, to be forgiven, to be loved, to be changed. You know? uh, and what a, what a freeing thing that is. And that I can learn to love good things that I hate. Uh, and not, you know, remain in my eight-year-old self of storming around and stomping because I don't want to do the chores right now. I don't want to be a 41-year-old man who doesn't like uh, doing chores. So i got a few months to grow up <laughs> before I'm 41. Um, it's an ongoing struggle, right? This is a daily thing. Good things that I just hate uh, and take up that battle every day. Um, that'll be a lot of what we'll be talking about. Psalm 51, kind of a theme for this whole course that'll uh, take us... Years it's only ago, 90 pages. Years ago, that used to be part of the liturgy. Liter yeah. So yeah. 10, 11, and 12. Yeah, we'll talk about the offertory. Uh, that's where that uh, uh, Psalm 51, uh, when you got to the, the common service about 150 years ago at Lutheran churches in America, Psalm 51 got placed in there and stuck there, stayed there. The offertory was more like the way we sing psalms um, right now. It would change. Uh, with the Sunday, um, but uh, that's, a, that's a good one to, to just stay there, too. Um, it, it does fit the whole uh, uh, purpose of what we're doing here. But So we'll also talk some uh, history uh, of the uh, Lutheran liturgy uh, and our divine service as it's been handed down to us, uh, and a lot of the, the details uh, that we might overlook uh, and not see how much we might be fed even within like movement uh, on the ceremonies of, of the, the church, uh, colors and all of the things that feed the eyes, which we'll uh, start getting into next Sunday. Final thoughts, questions, comments, concerns, jokes, stories. I hope so. I hope uh, one of the goals of this is to see, um, to better see the beauty of what we do on Sunday morning uh, and to be better fed uh, so that uh, we take what we're taking in on Sunday morning into the week, even if it's just as simple as when you see me do this movement. I mean, there is so much scripture uh, packed into this. Uh, it's not just, I don't know what to do with my hands or it's like... Like drama, a dramatic sort of thing. This is bringing you to scripture, uh, and from that scripture you can live. Like there's, there's so much in there. Uh, this 90-page uh, Bible study will be barely scratching the surface, uh, the surface of uh, our divine service. Taught by our Lord and trusting His promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be Thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Have a great week!